right, time to get into this Christmas edition of WWE SmackDown for Whoa. December 22nd, 2006. Come on, James. What's your favorite Christmas song, James? Do you put me on the spot like that? <laughs> Top five right now. Johnny will make a poll and let you know if you win. That. <laughs> What's that one that comes on in like fucking Vons and fucking, you know, TJ Maxx? Pop your pussy. Yeah, ass. There you go. <laughs> That's my favorite Christmas one. And shake your ass. Right, Gary, cash. that one, James. Are you talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold All I want for Christmas, Christmas is you. This is you. Yeah. Well, zebrahead version. We have some. <laughs> we got some observer notes from around time. Uh, not well. It's uh, actually Brian Alvarez, the F4W, around time, and you know what Spicy. that means. The F, not the F4W, the FTNA is what we'll call that one. Well, that's what we got here as well. Let's go. <laughs> F4W for December eighteenth, two thousand six, in TNA news. Two down, one to go. <laughs> Samojo beat Kurt Angle in the main event of the TNA Turning Point pay per view on December 10th. And now it looks like the third and final match will be taking place in January. I, Brian Alvarez says, I have determined that as a born again Christian, Vince Russo has been told by God that Christ will be returning in February. <laughs> I can think of no other reason why they would whip through this program in this matter. <laughs> they got to make money. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to run it as Angle's first big program and rush to the first big rematch, I guess that's fine. <laughs> they got to make money. That's what Jeff Jarrett said. They got to make money or Dixie's dad is going to get fucking pissed. <laughs> <laughs> the mafia is going to come after him. <laughs> Uh, in WWE news, WWE taped the tribute to the Troop show last Friday in Iraq. They've already got a ton of press and will be getting even more as the air date draws nearer. WWE was given the Secretary of Defense Exceptional Public Service Award for all the work they've done for the troops, and Vince immediately handed it over to JBL, saying it was his idea to do the thing in the first place. There was a mortar attack while they were setting up the ring. Seriously, three mortars hit the street less than a block away and knocked a number of people down, including a WWE cameraman. Several people were injured, though nobody associated with WWE. Footage of the attack then aired on WWE.com. <laughs> Whoa, that's <a> good. <laughs> <laughs> What? That's, the that's hell? Fucking, fucking that's crazy. nice. <laughs> I didn't realize the Tribute to the Troops was a JBL idea, which makes a lot more sense when we get into this show. Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah, he, get, he goes on a tangent. Did you yeah, know they just time. hit 20th anniversary of Tribute to the Troops? Isn't that wild to think about? 20th? Yeah, 20th anniversary of Tribute to the Troops. That can't be right. That's what it says. They have a logo for it and everything. But this is 2006, and it's the first one, It says it? 20th anniversary. Or maybe it's not the first one. It probably isn't the first one, but it's, okay. it says 20th. 20th? Isn't that crazy? That's Holy wild. Holy fuck. Yeah, man. I want to die. I don't want to be alive. Tribute to the Troops is older than some people <laughs> listening to this show. How crazy is That's that? That's 100% true. Wow. Yeah. There's some people listening to this right now training <laughs> to be a pro wrestler <laughs> to be that on, are younger than to Tribute, be on to, the tribute to the Troops. They're training <laughs> yeah. for that show specifically. That's awesome. Uh, RVD ended up not going to Tribute to the Troops after all. They wanted him to go last year and he refused. And then they put even more pressure on him this year and he refused again. That's my fucking boy. <laughs> There is a ton of heat on him. I doubt he cares since it's more and more likely with each passing day that he's going to TNA. <laughs> yeah, going to TNA. Yeah. What? His, when it, when his contract expires in mid 2007, which is not what happens. He goes to TNA yeah. in like 2011, right? Yeah, he does not. He stays there. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Ironically, Triple H didn't go either. As Stephanie wanted to be home with a new baby, he vowed to go next year, and that was okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Great. <laughs> RVD RVD. Yeah, RVD wins again How does this guy keep winning like this In TNA news Kurt Angle's big announcement on Bubba the Love Sponge Sorry Jesus this week was There's that. no way <laughs> There's no fucking way He exists for 10 years it seems Nobody like Nobody fucking fist. listen yeah. to this shit There's no way He said on Bubba Love Sponge this week that he'll be doing a shoot fight in TNA in 2007. Don't hold your breath on that one. I'm assuming this did not happen, unless I forgot. It did. He fought Jeff Jarrett in a shoot fight. (laughs) That was not 2007. (laughs) He did have a shoot fight. Hulk Hogan was also on the show and said that Dixie Carter was interested in bringing him into the company as a booker. Alvarez says, I guess Hogan's 20-year WWE contract allows him to work for the opposition. (laughs) Bubba the Love Sponge. Or maybe it doesn't, <laughs> Bubba the Love Sponge had a shoot fight with Awesome Kong. <laughs> That's right. That and she w- whooped his, yeah, whooped ass. his ass. <laughs> that was based as hell. Yeah, well, uh, this is pretty crazy news right here. I don't know if I've ever heard this because we've talked about this on the show before to try to figure out what the fuck this even meant. Notes from a BG James press conference last week. He said his 15 year old son came up with Voodoo Kin Mafia. Okay. TNA, TNA came up with VKM. And their original idea was very cool men. 
Dude, they had a room full of people. <laughs> Whose idea? Who, DNA who creative. Creative. Not, not Jim, Jim Cornette. Jim Cornette. Probably. Vince Russo. Vince, Vince Jim Russo, Cornette. Jim Cornette, Jeff Jarrett. Yeah, they're Dutch rocking. Dutch Mantel. <laughs> they're rocking, man. Very Bruce Pritchard. cool men with a K. So they had VK, uh, the initials before they had the group name. Is that how I'm v- understanding Yes, because they wanted to do something because of Vince's name. Yes. So they, and they said, what did we come up with? Ah. Very cool men. He said, and Alvaro says, he swears to God that that's what the story is. <laughs> He's, and BG James said his son took a dictionary, uh, went to the computer, and pulled up a bunch of words starting with those letters, and they settled on Voodoo Kin Mafia. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, now, just please picture the timeline where that stable is actually the very cool men. <laughs> it's just it's, it can't be any shittier than what it actually was. <laughs> Uh, From the F4W newsletter, December 25th, 2006. The next ECW pay-per-view is scheduled to be One Night Stand 3 Fuck Buddies on June 10th. Is that the DPW show coming up? (laughs) And he also put here, WWE released Danny Doring. Yes, he was under contract. No! (laughs) This can't be right! Sorry, (laughs) Sorry, James. And uh, from the F4W, January 1st, 2007, uh, I think I've read this on the show before, but some people may have not heard this before. Uh, this is about the Assy McGee cartoon. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, based. Uh, Adult just Swim. Alvarez, yes, <laughs> kind of, WB.com style. Uh, Alvarez says, just when I think I've heard the best story ever, something tops it. The creators of the animated series Assy McGee have filed suit against WWE over the Vince McMahon's ass cartoon, which debuted recently on WB.com. The way the story goes, Michael Cole, who runs WB.com, asked one of his staffers to come up with a creative idea that the boss would like. Apparently, this guy decided to rip off Assy McGee, which is a sitcom that airs during Adult Swim on the Cartoon Network about yeah. a police officer who is, surprise, surprise, a walking ass with a gun. Yeah, with a gun. Worse, Cheeks. Yeah. <laughs> walking. Cheeks. Yeah, with a yeah. gun. Worse, a few of the storylines from Mr. McMahon's ass were blatantly stolen from Assy McGee. Even more humiliating for Vince is that Cartoon Network is owned by Turner Broadcasting, his old rival, uh. and they can't even really take this to court since they've got no defense whatsoever. Vince loved the cartoon, thinking it was the best thing in the world that there was a cartoon about his ass. And when this all came down shortly before Christmas, he blew a gasket. Cole, who hired a separate Flash animator to produce the cartoon full-time and was also working on t-shirts, claimed he'd never heard of Assy McGee. This hardly flew as it appears WWE will have to pay for the mistake in cash to Turner. Cole is said to be in serious trouble, and there's a chance he'll be fired as head of WWE.com. <laughs> I've heard that story. <laughs> I've heard that. St- I think, I've heard that story yeah, before. I, I think we may have said that on the pod before, but I figured you know bring it back yeah, around because it is a fucking ridiculous story. It that is, is un- like you should have copied Dragon Ball Z, dipshit. <laughs> <laughs> It's crazy. Like Michael Cole says, come up with something for the boss. And he said, all right, I will make his ass a, a cartoon. Should have fucking copied ah, Metalocalypse. Right. That would have been awesome. Oh, my God. Yeah. Vince could have been Dr. Rockzo. I <laughs> 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 no, should have made that Mr. Pickles joint. Uh, Vince would have the dog. <laughs> that would have been fucking awesome, too. Yeah, that would be crazy. Mick Foley on the Raw vs. SmackDown video game in WWE Magazine says, my kids love creating wrestlers. They've created this guy called Charismatic Test. He must be fake because we all know he doesn't exist. Holy... That was fucked up. <laughs> what the hell? Uh, and TNA news, as some of you may have heard now by now, the ch- TNA challenge to WWE is legit in that there is $1 million set aside to pay for the match if it gets made. The match they're talking about is VKM against DX. Dude, holy because fucking Because they made a shit, ch- man. <laughs> I never want to hear about VKM ever again. <laughs> Very well, cool man versus <laughs> generation X. I'm done. <laughs> The very cool man against DX. Yeah, TNA legitimately put $1 million aside if WWE were to accept to, for them to have a match. Uh, Alvarez says, I know it sounds absolutely ridiculous, but what is more ridiculous is that this was not just done in case, but rather because Dixie Carter actually thought the WWE was surely going to accept the offer. This right here encapsulates everything about the realities of the people at the very top of TNA and why guys like Vince Russo get signed in 2006. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> and la- very last thing here uh, from an ROH show that ran in Hartford, Connecticut that weekend, the day before uh, another ROH show. Alvarez says, in the student matches, a dude named Alex Sugarfoot no. beat a guy. Not in the Alex pub. Sugarfoot <laughs> paid. Please. <no. laughs> Alex Sugarfoot paid. I told you I didn't make him up. Alex Sugarfoot beat a guy called, seriously, 
Chris Masters. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Al Chris says, why would you even take that name? Why not call yourself David Flair? <laughs> 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 oh, that was the world of wrestling at the time oh, at the end of wow. year 2006 That's going awesome. into 2007 wow I can't believe TNA just had a million dollars to set aside like we're just gonna put this aside imagine that well we're not giving that to AJ yeah, <laughs> like, no, that money no, no. ended up going no, no. missing you know no one knows where that million yeah, dollars yeah, went. it went to Billy Gunn's contract yeah <laughs> <laughs> All right, hey, boys, before we get into this SmackDown review, uh, I want to peel back the curtain a little bit for for the listeners um, because I made a mistake, (laughs) and I want to own up to it. To you guys, I want to apologize, first of all. I mean, thankfully, you didn't have to endure what I endured, but I had recommended we watch another episode for Mm -hmm. this retro because a lot of people had brought it up to me. Yeah, a lot of people have been saying I've seen it on the Reddit and everywhere. People want to talk about it. It was suggested that we do the 2012 WWE Raw Christmas episode. And I was like, okay, let's fucking do that. Much to everyone but me. uh, uh, Tony said, I hate 2012 WWE. I don't want to do this. I said, come on, it's Christmas. (laughs) So it's from December 24th, 2012. I'm watching it. Three hour Raw, which is two hour and 15 on Peacock. So I'm watching it and I'm going and I'm like, oh man, this is, (laughs) oh man, this is. I'm in trouble. <laughs> I'm, I'm never going to hear the end of this. <laughs> this is going to be bad. I get to an hour and a half into the show. I open my Discord and I say, guys, have you watched the show yet? And they said, no. And I said, guys, I can't watch the show anymore. We got to watch something else. We can't watch this fucking thing. This Raw is so fucking bad. It's so fucking not fucking good to watch. I was so pissed. <laughs> but I will briefly go over... Some of the stuff I had to endure here, um, because I don't want, I don't, there's, this is not fun. I didn't have fucking fun with this. It wasn't going oh, yeah, yeah. was, right. to be like XWF fun. Yeah. This was going to be, we're not having fun day. And yeah. I couldn't do that. Too. <laughs> it's just like, understandable. Yeah. I can't wait to hear it, but I'm assuming it's like random matches and yeah, it's whatever. a bunch of gimmick matches, holiday style. Dude, the intro to the show. The intro to the show is the entire roster on the stage singing a WWE Christmas oh, I Carol. I remember that. I remember that. that was a, I thought that was a WWE.com exclusive or something. That's not. That was opening the show. Ooh. Are they singing Deck the Halls or whatever? Is that what it is? It's their own fucking thing. I wrote it down. Oh, my. <laughs> you wrote it down? I wrote it down because we were reviewing the show, James, and I had to write it down. Uh, I, yeah, I well, you're right. Yeah, you're right. I mean, so here is what right. it. Here is what they. I'm not singing it. I will read you're it right. as angrily as possible. Dashing through the snow so we can entertain. Stop. Or top rings will go. Hope I land on Kane. <laughs> Funk is on a roll when you step into that ring. Yes, no. Yes, no. Okay, yes. I'm not going to sing. <laughs> Oh, ring the bell, ring the bell. The season's here, no doubt. We won't stop until we win, or I want to knock you out. That was the big show saying that. We go out to compete all alone or in a pair. This is a long song. Was, <laughs> it, was Dean Ambrose on the stage? No, The Shield only had just debuted. They're oh, not involved here. CM Punk is on the stage. Oh, my uh, God. <laughs> I can't eat enough re- uh, meat. Red meat, we fly through the air. I'm the best in this whole world. I know that is not true. Excuse me, don't you start a fight. Can you dig it? You sing too. Oh, ring the bell. Ring the bell. We hope that you're inspired. If you're not entertained, Vince will say you're fired. Happy holidays from the WWE family. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so oh sorry. Oh, my Is goodness. that it? Is that all you want to talk about this, Rod? Did the big thing happen at all? Did the, main- the big thing happens immediately, Tony. Okay. Santa Claus Mick Foley comes out. And he's giving out gifts to the crowd. And then Del Rio's music hits, and he hits him with a car. <laughs> oh, there it Just is. Immediately. Time out, time out, time out, time out. Yes? This happens at the beginning of the show? Yeah. The Del Rio thing happens at the beginning of the show. It's the first thing on the show, other than this. And other they wanted thing. to watch a three-hour show where, the, where everything they wanted to see was in the first 15 <laughs> seconds? 100%. Oh, my God. <laughs> Yo, I, we got to bring you back. We got to bring you back. We got to bring you guys back. <laughs> Throughout the night, they're giving updates about Santa from WWE's medical personnel. Oh, oh no, no, Yo. no, no, um, no. I think I, I had to watch it. No, no. <laughs> I think on. I wrote down here at some point that wrestling should have died before this. 
and like, <laughs> and that was on the 2006 episode. Yeah, it's not even this one. Yeah, yeah. six more years. <laughs> so other things that happened, I had to watch Cody Rhodes versus Kane go 11. Layla, Caitlin, Natalia, and Alicia Fox versus Eve, Oksana, Tamina, and Rosa Mendez, where Jerry Lawler and Michael Cole jerk themselves off for five oh, whole minutes. They do that in 2006, minutes. too. They do that it's for horrible. six years. Hey, I just want you guys to know if you think this is going to be a merry, hairy, happy Christmas here, <laughs> you are incorrect. <laughs> Christmas is fucking ruined because of the WWE. You did this, Vince, you bastard. Santa, Santa is dead and Christmas is over. <laughs> the main event is Cena and Del Rio in a Deck the Halls with Riz match or something. Deck the Halls with Riz? No way. <laughs> I know Raw had no Riz back then, bro. What? So, listen, guys. I don't want to disappoint anybody. This was entirely my decision. This shit, I could not fucking stomach anymore. I couldn't fucking do There's a fucking 12-man tag later in the show. Oh, no. Oh, oh. So, so that's... Me reading that fucking thing at the top is all you're getting. Please forgive me. Oh. Yeah. So now let's talk about SmackDown oh. from December twenty second, two thousand and six. Oh no. We we I mean <laughs> all right, here's the thing with the two thousand six. So we chopped some of this shit off the top, all right. We haven't like accumulated enough doo doo meat to make a shiz sandwich just yet. But sure. god damn we're getting there. You know what I mean? We yeah, are definitely getting 100%. there. This is uh two thousand seven's peaking around the corner and it's it's taunting us. It's, yeah, right, it's, yeah. It's, yeah. <laughs> they said we're about we're a bunch of away from two thousand seven. Uh, y'all don't want to go there. Y'all might want to stop right now. <laughs> We're about to fuck this up for everybody. Um, yeah. So, cold open here starts a show. Uh, Booker T and the world is watching. But of course, all, they always are. I think. Um, of course, Booker T and Fit Finlay are asking Teddy Long for a rematch with John Cena and Batista. Yeah, because they both did. They have a tag match at the pay per view, or did they both wrestle them in singles? Armageddon. The Armageddon. I remember watching the MVP Kane match, the Inferno match. I, I vividly remember that for some reason. Just I guess because it had been a while from since we had mm-hmm. an Inferno match. I thought it was cool. Yeah, JBL likes to inform me of that later. <laughs> Jesus Christ, does he? <laughs> fucking hell. Uh, Booker is full King Booker here. Uh, he's talking in the fucking you know, royal Dude, accent. this is so funny. I love it's great. King Booker. Yeah. I do too, yeah. So Booker says, we implore you to listen, Teddy. Uh, Finley comes to you as a gentleman. I come to you as the king and ruler of the SmackDown kingdom. <laughs> <laughs> Charmel's like shaking says, her, we- yes. <laughs> yeah, we want a rematch with John Cena and Batista right here tonight. And Teddy says, listen, you guys had your matches play it. You had, you not getting a, a fucking rematch. And Booker says, we are looking for the best competition you have to offer. And Teddy says, oh, that's what you want. You want the best competition. And Finley says, what are you, deaf? <laughs> <laughs> what, are you living on a rock or something? <laughs> <laughs> Teddy says, fine. You can take on Kane and The Undertaker. And Booker immediately drops the whole gimmick. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, no, no. We ain't talking about no Kane and Undertaker. Fuck that. <laughs> immediately starts running down Teddy. Not happy about this tag match. He starts not even saying words at some point. He's just fucking just going on and on. He, he's just Booker T he's now. T- yeah, he's T- not King Booker, Booker anymore. at this point. Yeah. 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 Um, about to kick your fucking ass. I wrote here at the end of this segment. I said, I know this is about to be the worst show I've ever seen. <laughs> 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 I saw this segment. I said, oh, here we go. We fucked up by watching so many holiday ones the past yeah, two Yeah, like we watched years. them like a row, like, yeah, trying to... Yeah, we did... All, the whole month was all Christmas. We fucked up because we ran out of them pretty well, fucking quick. Well, I, I do remember the Armageddon pay-per-view that it was, what, like, that Sunday before this was really good. Yeah, it just I happened. remember that being yeah. really good, honestly. It was like a sleeper hit of a pay-per-view because I... Well, it has that fucking ladder match where Joe Mercury bust his shit open big style. You see yeah. that on our um, Patreon. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We did watch that, didn't we? Yeah, um, that that went crazy. I yeah, just remember I mean, like because there was like nothing on that card, and then they threw that ladder match in last minute, and it was like, holy shit, this is awesome. Is this the show where Taker brains Kennedy with the chair? Yeah, I think so. Because they have like that last ride match or whatever it's and called. He last rides them through the fucking hearse or whatever. Yeah, I think TNA so, has yeah. the last rights match, <laughs> which was not as bad. God damn it, not a bad match. Um. So Booker T. Uh, is getting ready with Finley, of course, his tag team partner. Um, yes. But before we get into that later, we have to get to the intro for this SmackDown. And I won't be denied. Dude, these are... I don't remember this at all. I don't the remember this pictures. at all. The, draw, the, the cartoon drawings. Yeah. I, me and James both posted the same picture of Kane on Twitter, <laughs> which is ridiculous. Okay, because I was going to, and I didn't because you hadn't watched it yet. My family's <laughs> dead. dead. <laughs> what do I do? <laughs> Dude, they're fucking crazy looking, though. I, I, does that last a long time, you think? Shouldn't. 
It, well, like everybody that responded to me on Twitter <laughs> just responded with, and I won't be denied. Like everybody remembers it, oh, but wow. I don't remember okay. it at all. Let's just go over that really quick. We are, look, I know that every single person listening to this grew up at this exact moment in time where this was really cool yes. to you. We're about to shit down its throat here for the next hour. So if you aren't prepared for that, just be prepared. It's either that or we're going to talk about Dana White's slap fighting. Oh, decide. that's coming. Don't worry about that. Uh, yeah, so uh, I, won't I won't be denied. Be denied. Um, I actually oh, like the song for the show. Um, I got, yeah, that's a good one. They've changed like four different times. Like I feel like a bunch of different bands. Drowning yeah. Pool changes singers three times while they do it, too. Um, the cartoon picture thing made me feel like I was watching a kids show um and i know around that era when that's where it's going yeah so. i know that's what i'm saying like around that era like if i would have seen this i would have like tuned out immediately i think i'd be like i'm not watching yeah. this kitty the shit. thing about it is like <laughs> it wasn't even i like, appreciate the effort it's it just w- it wasn't even good cartoon drawings it was no, like it looked shitty like it was they really like the shitty. shittiest shots they could have for everybody <laughs> and like, there's like a a, fin- a shot of Finley, and I think he has a giant gap tooth in his. <laughs> it looks ridiculous. It's yeah, like, he's put a fucking it's tractor like the in worst that thing, thing ever. Holy shit. Yeah. Uh, so now it's time for the Batista Town Hall. Yeah. The hair dryer segment, also, by the way. Yes, sir. Yo, this SmackDown, this SmackDown is full of hair dryers, especially at yeah. the opening segment when they mentioned Undertaker and Kane. <sighs> <Yeah>. Batista <laughs> doing the pyro thing was hot. I, lo- I mean, that's an all. That's like I'm drafting that for my top five uh, entrance weight taunts, no mercy style. Yeah, I take. I got my future first round, and uh, I'll get that one. Thankfully, Tony didn't give another one up here, so he's back to five. I will tell you this much, man. Uh, we get into this segment. I ain't know what to expect. Uh, so Batista gets into the ring, and I and it takes about ten minutes. He does his entire entrance. I mean, pillar to post, fucking. He's going to get it all. Champion, by the way. He is going to yeah. get it all. Yeah. He, I mean, yeah. if you go later, if you go later in the night, uh, they were definitely filling time with entrances on <laughs> yeah. this show. Everyone gets their big. <laughs> you think so, You think they cut something or is it just they didn't no, have they anything? No, they didn't have the enough episode. stuff. So they just let them do their full entrances. They knew the holiday rating was going to fucking bomb. So they yeah. said, ah, whatever. Yeah, so, exactly. So Batista gets in the ring and I, this is the biggest. I know you guys want to get out of here promo I've ever heard <laughs> in my life. Batista says oh. he got that holiday spirit, you know, got them red trunks on. <laughs> the first thing he, he, he does say that, you're right. He, the first thing he says, he grabs the mic, he says, hell yeah. I said, whoa, what the fuck? <laughs> okay. Dude, this is I, yeah, got my up. red trunks on and I'm feeling, I'm finishing up the year strong. Yeah. No, <laughs> he, he, first thing he says is, happy holidays to SmackDown fans all over the world. Yeah. All over the world. <laughs> Let them know. All dude, over the world. Dude, <laughs> dude. <laughs> Got my red trunks on. I'm finished on the strong. Yeah. Red trunk when, he goes, when he goes, better hell of a year. Some ups, some downs. Some oh, downs. fuck. No. Yeah, he's uh, just chilling, guys. And this was like a just extended chilling. promo today. They said, Dave, go take some time. They didn't some give ups. him one like bullet point in this whole promo. He said, oh, hey, how's no it going? Way. Everybody got that goddamn yeah. Christmas coming up. Woo! <laughs> Got to go into Armageddon with my man, WWE Champion John Cena. He this is how like, a human talks. He did like the Jerry Seinfeld. What's a deal with Christmas, you know? What's, yeah. <laughs> I got like that John Cena. Got that dude he's, on the pay-per-view. Yeah, my man. He does the Vince thumbs up, thumbs down. <laughs> Cena? Yeah? No? Yeah. yeah. John Cena? I had to surrender to the title at the beginning of the year, and at the end of the, of the same year, I get to stand in the middle of... Of a SmackDown ring, your world heavyweight champion. Yeah. <laughs> and what's the deal with King Booker? Is he a king or or is he just Booker? Dude, he goes, did you did you already say this? But he goes, we were, we whooped up on Booker and Finley. Oh yeah, we whooped up on Booker. <laughs> well, and I got the red trunks on. <laughs> red trunks now here at the Batista household. He's real festive. Uh, yeah. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Cole just says, "Hey, it's Santa Claus." Yes, JBL uh, said, "What Santa do you fucking out. mean? It's Santa Claus." <laughs> Santa comes out, and JBL says, "That's too skinny to be Santa." And Cole says, "JBL, have you been naughty or nice?" And JBL says, "That's none of your damn business. I don't need gifts. I'm rich." <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, <laughs> shit. Dude, and Santa's it's- giving out, you know, everything everybody wants, like this fucking. T-shirt. God damn, <laughs> damn t-shirt. God damn. Uh, DVD. God damn uh, CD-ROM. He's giving da, like da. a... 
I think they're like Roddy Piper DVDs or something. You know what the okay? Whatever. So they, so the, uh, yeah. So Santa's walking down the ramp, giving out merch, WWE merch out of his sack. Uh, they cut to a kid in the crowd that's wearing a Sandman shirt, which I thought was pretty based. <laughs> that was awesome. JBL says, "Oh, I heard Santa made an appearance in Iraq." <laughs> okay. JBL confirmed that. that Santa landed down in Baghdad, Iraq. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> what y'all Santa think about walks, Baghdad, Iraq? <laughs> Santa walks yeah. around the ring. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Got them red trucks on in Iraq. Got that spirit on that fellas. Woo. <laughs> More tar. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, out. Santa Claus got the goddamn WrestleMania in. <laughs> he, came, he came out and like it, it, no, no, nothing. It just comes out and like gets the hole down the ramp, whole way around the ring, whole get a, way to the get other a side. Tron. <laughs> yeah, dude, like this is unbelievable. What? I said this is like got to be 15 minutes in the show, and we're just Santa Claus doing his interest here. Goddamn. <laughs> yeah, he walks on the ring. He gets close to the announce table. Michael Cole starts yelling, "Santa, Santa!" <laughs> and he says, yeah, "And Santa gives him a kiss." He says, "Yeah, thank you, Santa." And uh, he gave him a Roddy Piper <laughs> DVD. And JBL says, "Hey, a Roddy Piper DVD." And Cole snatches it out of his hand and says, "Hey, that's not yours." And JBL slaps him in the head. <laughs> And then JBL says, Roddy and I were good friends, and Roddy hated you. <laughs> <laughs> That's dude. probably true, actually. Dude. Yeah. Uh, I, I, uh, today I got home from like a three scoop leg day, Asta Grass fucking working sets crazy style. And I look, I go, I'm like, what are we going to watch for this fucking thing today? I turn this on, I see Santa Batista the Rig talking about goddamn nothing for 20 minutes. <laughs> I'm gonna shoot myself <laughs> with this bomb, dude, dude, dude. More tar. This just reminds me. Oh my gosh, we were at your what? house with Hunter Rainer. Hunter episode, Rainer this suggested this, this episode. episode. Oh, oh really my song. goodness! This came on and Hunter Rainer goes, "You guys should watch this. I love this. Like Hunter's like the biggest 2006 SmackDown." Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Worse? I know all these dude. fucking people listening are like, "There's no way they like this 2006 dude, Hunter, shit." Hunter also avidly recommended the other one too. The fucking Alberto Torrio Santa Claus one. Yes, yes. Yo, I'm so sorry, guys. I know you guys ain't trying to hear hear this, but uh, <laughs> bro, this is insane. You know, back in my day, Stone Cold was done in Santa. That's uh, remember hell my yeah. Holidays. Well, this, I mean, this honestly, this beginning part is my favorite part of the show. So. Yeah, it was all right. Uh, <laughs> uh, so Santa gets in the ring. Santa gives Batista a gift. And Batista starts handing out candy canes to the crowd. The world champion throwing candy canes out to the crowd. Batista then turns around, and then Santa attacks him with a steel pipe with a bow on it. <laughs> he brought that punch. all the way from Baghdad, Iraq. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can see that tribute to the troops, of course. So Santa decks Batista with a steel pipe with a bow on it, and it just fucking leaves. I said, what the hell? Get back here, Santa. You are not done here. Dude, Santa walks away, leaves the goddamn world heavyweight champion, Batista, laying, laying in the ring. <laughs> and, like, he was just going to walk away, and, like, that was going to be it. That's insane, you know, That was his man. plan, yeah. That's insane. Well, Teddy Long comes out. Teddy Long comes out on the stage. Teddy Long says, hold on a second, player. I don't know who you are, but I know you're not Santa Claus. He said, since you want to come out here and give away cheap shots instead of presents, then let me return the favor, player. Your present for this year, I'm going to give you a match with Batista. Now, Santa Claus here is not a wrestler. In my, I mean, as, as far as I know, he's just Santa Claus. So Santa Claus is not signed anywhere, accepts Teddy Long's match, and not only accepts it, no, like, hesitation, no, like, afraid of Batista, not like, oh, fuck, oh, fuck, I hope I don't have to fucking wrestle Batista. Oh, I got to wrestle Batista. Teddy Long makes the match. Santa turns around, beelines to the ring, and then starts stomping out Batista in the ring. <laughs> the <one who> went <laughs> champion. He starts whooping Batista's ass. He has no reason, no like hesitation. He just fucks Batista up, and the match starts. He hit. He's fucking Batista's arm up. They say Finley and Booker fucked Batista's arm up a few weeks ago. So Santa is working Batista's arm. Divorce courts him. It smashes it off the apron and the ring post. He gets a two count on Batista. <laughs> Santa Claus. This is the Dude. world champion, by the way. He, this, yeah, world the world champion. champion Batista, by the way. Uh, red trunks on for the holidays. <laughs> oh, 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 uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, Batista Santa starts. Santa hailing from Baghdad, Iraq. Uh, <laughs> trying to take on Batista here. Batista uh, finally gets back up on Santa. Back body drops on a lariat, a spear. 
Then he rips off the hat and beard. And it's Sylvain Grenier is Santa Claus. This is Hunter Rainer's arch enemy. <laughs> now... I- <laughs> <laughs> Savant, and I want you to understand this, guys, because we will review the rest of the show, obviously. At no point during the rest of the show do they explain why Santa Claus was Savant Grenier. Can we we, we also talk about how, like, before Batista unbearded Santa, he was whooping the dog shit out of him? Like, Savant was fucking Batista up big style. So, like, Santa is a tier above Sylvain Grenier. Yeah, that's what everybody yes, understands yes. where the rankings sit Now he's sit Savant here. and he's a bitch and he's so Santa is a, Santa's a tier above Sylvain Grenier and Batista, the one I would champion. Santa's like up here, but then he unbeard him and then <laughs> Sylvain so Grenier is Batista. So, make yeah, sure you yes. keep up with that. So, Batista hits him with the spine buster and then the Batista bomb and gets the win. JBL says, why the hell did Savant do this? France doesn't even have no damn Santa Claus. <laughs> Which I don't what? know if that's historically accurate. No, not at all. Uh, the ref helps Santa out of the ring uh, into the back as Batista celebrates. Uh, Cole says, happy holidays, JBL. I hope you have a great season. JBL says, it's none of your damn business what I'm doing for the holidays or if I'm happy or not. Let him know. JBL that's real in- shit. <laughs> <laughs> Batista just barely skates by against Sylvain Grenier. Insane. Literally insane. So it shows her... Vi- it's a, it, even crazier. It goes to a vengeance recap here. Yes. Uh, Chris Benoit beating Chavo for the U.S. title and Vicky Guerrero in a neck just brace. Just barely. <laughs> yeah, just barely escaping Chavo Guerrero in his neck. Um, well, JBL says that Chavo is a champion of women's rights. Um, oh, that's okay. And we do Chris... JBL ben- is not. Yeah, absolutely fucking... Neither is Michael Cole. Um, no way. So, of course, they show the vengeance recap. This was this past weekend. Chris Benoit beating Chavo Guerrero. Was it this past weekend? I had to be, right? It was. Yeah, it was. Right. It was just okay, well, Sunday. fuck it. We're doing that it Sunday. again anyways. Chris yeah. Benoit versus Chavo Guerrero, U.S. title on the line. As the match uh, is going for the entrances here, there's random shots of troops in the crowd. JBL says, the WWE going to visit the troops is the best thing it does better than WrestleMania. It's the greatest thing we could have ever done, and I, I, I whoever came up with it should get 15 blowjobs for this Christmas. I swear <laughs> they should. <laughs> <laughs> It also pans in on a fucking random guy in a goddamn goddamn ghillie suit. And he's just hanging yeah. out in the crowd, crazy stuff. He's just a fan, yeah. just dressing up, yeah. Um, WWE should have died in his <laughs> 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 This is unreal. Uh, but uh, anyways, Benoit and Chavo, they, they, I mean, you know what? For whatever it's worth. In a, in a bubble, if you don't consider how... Chavo is treated other than this era here, this month. This is a fucking fine match. Benoit gives him a lot. Mm-hmm. Too much. Yeah. Um, Benoit and Chavo, they 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 try to wrestle here. Um, but yeah, Chavo has been like just so killed by WWE. This is like yeah. this whole era, to be honest with you, this whole era, which you know, I'm sure WWE wasn't thinking about it um at, at the time you know 2002 2003 sure. or whatever they probably weren't thinking about it too much but this is the result of treating all of your talent like dog shit for half a decade so we're get- trying to keep a draft where people are like you know viable opponents like you run out of opponents when you have you know a shorter roster so you know you're trying to build up chavo he's got vicky with him and you know but benoit is you know fucking chris benoit yeah right so like you have like this weird dichotomy here between these two guys where like if it whenever Benoit is down, it feels like horse shit. It's like, why is he down? Like, you know what I mean? Right. Yeah, it's, yeah. But, but you know, all that aside or for whatever it's worth here, Chris Benoit and Chavo were working their ass off to make this happen. They fucking have, I think they have a fucking good match here, man. I probably was better than the pay-per-view. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm sure it was. <laughs> yeah. I wrote down this is a very TV style match with Chavo wrenching on Benoit forever is how I felt. Just like, uh, he does a lot of holds. That was this era where they down, told him to yeah. just like get a hold and like work through the commercial if we have one and yeah, yeah Damon's gone, so they said, whatever he sold you, knock that shit off. <laughs> <laughs> Benoit, like I said, gives Chavo a lot. He lets him get out of the triple Germans. Mm-hmm. Uh, he fucking backbreakers Benoit, which was, it was like a, he lifts Benoit up and like what I thought was like going to just be like a, he was going for like a gory special or something like that. He just backbreakers him. I was like, holy shit, that was dope as hell. 
Um, Chavo gets bumped. Benoit goes for the sharpshooter. Chavo gets out of like every fucking possible thing Benoit is doing. All of the classics, Chavo is Which just is nuts. getting out of the way of. Yeah, <laughs> yeah Chavo is yeah. fucking knows all of them and he's getting out of them. Finally, Benoit gets the triple Germans on him, hits a diving headbutt. Chavo kicks out at two off the diving headbutt, Oof. which was also crazy. Uh, Chavo is up there for a superplex. Uh, he, sorry, Benoit is trying to superplex Chavo. Fucking gets bumped. Uh, Chavo goes for the frog splash. Benoit gets the knees up. He tries to put Chavo in the crossface. Vicky gets into the ring and cracks Benoit with the U.S. Championship. Disqualification. Benoit wins. Uh, and then there's like a long stare down between Benoit and Vicky Guerrero. And I'm like, what is, what have, what is Line. going on here? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Like, I was like, is like something fucked up here? Benoit just leaves. Uh, and then the post match is Chavo yelling at Vicky, saying that he had Benoit beat and he pokes her in the chest and she takes the Kevin Nash bump. Uh, <laughs> the You're right, finger poke of doom, yeah. yeah. Straight down. Vicky, Vicky yeah. had a neck brace on, right? Yeah, that, that's... Yes, because Benoit put her in the, tried to put her yeah, in the Yeah, so her going down was like, oh, what the fuck? Yeah, so Chavo's yelling at Vicky on the ground. Benoit comes in the ring to check on Vicky, and then Chavo gloms Benoit, fucks him up, and then hits him with the U.S. title and leaves him laying. So this is not the end of the Chavo-Benoit saga. Yeah, yeah. um... Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, like I said, they're trying to make something to Chavo here, but obviously it's yeah, not. No, honest. no, you're right. And you, absolutely. I think that, like, it's pretty cool to see them trying to uh, rejuvenate a guy's career and, like, do something yeah. with him here. It's just so difficult. And then, like, um, you know, also, I'm not exactly sure. There, This was kind of a confusing post-match, to be honest with you. There's so much going on here. I feel like it didn't need to have so much going on, you know, it's like yeah, they're trying to like do like stuff with Vicky to keep her involved, but it's like it's it's awkward, mm -hmm. uh, it, like it's it's super weird. I think the feud ends with, of course, shockingly, Benoit beating Chavo. Sure, yeah, 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 <laughs> um, yeah. But they worked their ass off, so shouts out to them for for trying to do something with what they had there. So, um, yeah. backstage segment: Booker T and Finley are upset uh, because yeah, they, they have to face have this match. Kane and Undertaker tonight. They yeah, knew it was a like main this. event taker match, and they knew <laughs> there's no way. Yeah, they died, dude. <laughs> it, it took me a while to realize it, but I was like, when is this taker match, this tag team match that Undertaker's had? When is... Oh, no. no yeah, no. that's right. It's a main event taker tag match. You got to love it. Booker says, I don't like this thing. They, uh, Finley, they ain't just a couple guys. It's Kane and Undertaker. And Charmel says, no one's even seen Kennedy since Armageddon. I heard MVP is still in a, ver a burn unit. And Finley says, is that supposed to make us feel better? <laughs> Shut up. Finley says, listen, we can do this. We work as a team. We can take care of Taker and Kane. Kane? Kane? <laughs> yeah, no, that's right. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> that's what he did in the intro video. Yeah, yeah, you're right. So now it's time for the Gregory Helms Town Hall. Another guy that they are trying to do something with and Look, man. just jabroni him to hell here. They jabroni, like, it's... It's like they never learned. It's like they still are jabronian guys. Like, yeah. Come on, man. Hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> um, they, he's introduced by Tony Chimmel as the longest reigning champion in sports entertainment and the cruiserweight champion of the world. Wow. So they are trying to put him over here. Sure. Yeah. The, well, was this the era of the Gregory Helms Tron with the sunglasses? Gregory. Not yeah, with the sunglasses. sunglasses. No, 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 it's nah. not. Uh, his, his 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 uh is that a raw thing well his, yeah it might have been because his uh he, tron at the bottom i was looking for the sunglasses specifically uh, <laughs> it did not show the sunglasses it wasn't was this the listen era listen it's time was is it that, that maybe it is i don't know 2007 but, yeah. is that Okay, so it was still well, like Gregory be, right? Hell, so I don't know. Yeah, but anyway, I'm gonna check out our favorite website X Y Lot Themes, and I'll see what was when he anyway, changes. Oh, we do song research here. here on this show. We, that, we we do research uh, here. He uh, starts using "It's Time" in February of 2007. So James is correct. Now he's on the Gregory Helms. He's, he's <laughs> using Firestorm A intro cut with quotes. <laughs> <laughs> that would be Gregory Helms. Yeah, I think that's right. <laughs> okay, Town Hall so, Gregory yeah. Helms. What do we got going on here? Well, the cruiserweight champ wants one thing for Christmas, and that's some goddamn competition. He just first off, the division. dude. First off, <laughs> yeah. Um, what are we doing here? <laughs> yeah. Like, I could understand. I thought I didn't. I don't really know who's in the cruiserweight division at this point. I really don't. Um, uh, Chavo, Jimmy Wang Yang, Jamie Noble, Hornswoggle. Yeah, I thought like I. Yeah, well, I mean Hornswoggle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. He he just fought Jimmy Wang Yang at the pay per view and beat him. 
Okay. okay. So I thought this, and it's not even a bad segment. I was like, oh, cool. The Cruiserweight champ wants some goddamn competition. Universe mode style. I, I like that. I 100%. I was like, cool. They're going to like have someone, like, he even talks to me, like, oh, you know, and I didn't actually mind this at all. We've talked about this before. But, you know, the divisions thing. Gregory Helms is like, hey, man, maybe I should just move up to the heavyweight division and fucking take that title. I was like, oh, that's actually a cool angle. I wouldn't mind that. Yeah, no, I, uh, I like this because I thought they were going to bring somebody from the cruiserweight division back that maybe in there recently or like sure. someone's making a return or yeah, they yeah. are going to debut a new star maybe that they had like kind of anything. But what yeah. happens? Um, Gregory Helms said, yeah, you're right. He said he's going to eat a lot of them goddamn sandwiches over the holidays. <laughs> yeah. He's gonna get <laughs> he fat does say that. I'm going to the- pick out over the holidays and move up the heavy division because there's no one in this division that can stop Gregory Helms. I'm like, oh, that's fucking awesome. Gregory and Helms is a, a great worker, by the way. Like, he's you could have put cool out hell, too. You, you got to remember what year this is. You could have pulled out some crazy names here yeah, for this guy to face. Yeah, yeah. And you want to talk about yeah. making a star, going in there with the cruiserweight champ and taking him to his absolute fucking limit. And then letting them, you know, then letting them beat him up afterwards. That's how you made John Cena. So, like, you can make yeah. somebody here. You know what I mean? Um, this is just him trying to do the Sugar Shane run that he did in WCW. Yeah. Didn't yeah, get to do here. Yeah, which was right. good. As, I mean, that run was all. He wasn't vertebra breaking her peak. Well, I wish he was, but, you know. Well. Well. Yeah. So, the well, Cruiserweight <laughs> champion makes the call and. Good promo. And then, um, the boogeyman. <laughs> no. 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 <laughs> the boogeyman. The boogeyman comes My out. My first and I thought said, was like, this guy's not a cruiserweight. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe he's out here to feed him some worms to help him gain some weight, James. Don't you think that's a possibility here? Sure. I, you know, I didn't think of that. <laughs> well, you shouldn't. <laughs> oh, I agree. Yeah, I wasn't. Boogie Finn <laughs> comes down. He gets into the ring. Helms starts stomping him out. They're just fighting now. Helms is like, I'm not fucking dealing with this shit. I'm fighting the boogeyman. I'm fucking him up. Starts stomping him out. Boogeyman starts strutting around the ring, no-selling Helms. Cole says, oh, Boogeyman's doing his weird ritual. Like he's conjuring up some spirits. <laughs> the Cruiserweight champion undefeated. <laughs> Whooping his ass, trying to. Fuck Boogeyman you, throw- Gregory Helms. <laughs> Boogie Helms, Boogie, Boogie Helms, Boogie Man throws. Boogie he Helms, Boogie is, Helms. That's what where they, they wanted to done. go. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there he said, I'm gonna take over the tag division with my partner, the Boogie Man. <laughs> that would have been Boogie so Helms. based. That would have yeah. been so much better. Dude, that would have been unbelievable. Yeah. Who are the tag champs right now? Uh, the Hardys, uh, London, and London, Kendrick? And Kendrick. Dude, they could have lost to Gregory. Dude, that's like fucking asking for that match. Gregory Helms and Boogie yeah. Man versus fucking. Kendrick in London? Yeah, that would have been hot. That, I mean, if you're going to fucking jabroni him, at least let him have something cool <laughs> that, that people, people will remember Boogie Helms. Yeah, that would have been fucking <laughs> awesome. That didn't happen. Dude, though. Nightmare on Helm Street? Come on. If it's oh, yeah, hey. see, we're rocking, bro. Oh, my God. That's fucking Yeah, based. but none of that fucking happened. No, well, I can barely see what's going on here because the entire building is filled with red smoke. <laughs> I don't oh, know what ventilation the fuck is building. Here. Virginia, you got to get it fucked together. I mean, you got to get that red smoke on. <laughs> uh, Boogeyman pulls worms out of his gear, and then Helm sees this and runs out of the ring and runs through the crowd and uh, presumably out of the arena. So Boogeyman goes to the chase and he stops at the barricade. And Tony Chimmel <laughs> says, "It's the Dude, Boogeyman." What the- and he's coming to get you. Why? What the fuck, Why? What the fuck, are, you, what the fuck are you doing? Tony Jones said, it's time to feed me worms. <laughs> it's the and boogeyman. And now we're doing the worm segment. Yeah, well, all right. Now it's time yeah, now to it's eat time. some yeah. worms. Yeah. What 100%. the hell did he do? Why the fuck did he do that? He like forgot they, that he was supposed to do it. He said, and now I'm eating yeah. worms. <laughs> So Boogeyman hears him and turns over and looks at Chimmel. JBL is on commentary saying, get away from us, Chimmel, you fat idiot. (laughs) (laughs) Boogeyman is stalking Chimmel with worms. Michael Cole says Chimmel has eaten a lot of things in his life, but I don't think he's ever eaten worms. JBL says he'll eat anything. (laughs) (laughs) He's not even fat. He's He's not not fat. fat. (laughs) Well, big fat fatty Tony Chimmel (laughs) is laying on the announce table, and Boogeyman is now feeding him worms, forcing him to eat worms. And he eats the worms, and there's the worms for you. Okay. Well, let me. It's uh, the boogeyman. Let me give you an update here. Same exact day. All right. Update time. Same exact day. Ring of Honor ran a show, and uh, yeah, Christopher (laughs) Daniels and Matt Seidel versus Shingo Takagi and Shima. Yeah, Roddy versus Davey for the FIP title. 
Yeah. Dude, there's like in like seven days, Danielson drops the belt after 14 months to homicide. If they fucking they got Kings of Wrestling versus Briscoes. Larry Sweeney makes his <laughs> debut to help the Kings of Wrestling win on this Whoa, show. Oh, that's awesome. Eddie Edwards makes his ROH debut versus Austin Aries. That's sick. Fucking Danielson homicide, Nigel and Jimmy Raven, a four corner survival match. Oh my god. Don't forget Sugarfoot wrestled Chris Masters. <laughs> oh, how could I forget it? <laughs> Dude, just a reminder that WWE passed by an entire era of just yeah, just they all of them. Of they passed they the all shit. of them. They barely want a punk, bro. Dude, that's crazy, man. Yeah, that's crazy. That. Wow. wow. Yeah, just that's something to think incredible. about, man. Like that's nuts. well, I'm the boogeyman, and I'm coming to get you. Uh, thank you, you fat, fat. <laughs> You big fat fucker. He's like a Fucking normal ass bitch. guy. Like, <laughs> yeah, well, he's fat. Yeah. Anyways, uh, Joy Mercury is here, and he is fucked up big style. Holy shit! From the Vengeance ladder match. Exploding ladder face. I'm getting not vengeance. Crazy. Yes. Oh, sorry. Yeah, that's right. You. The, yeah, that's right. I was like, why did I say vengeance earlier? It's because you keep saying. Yeah, because <laughs> what did we watch recently where it said vengeance is coming soon? Oh, it was Sin Cara oh, it was versus Sin Cara. Sin Cara. Yeah, <laughs> yeah y'all fucked me up, man. <laughs> So Jerry um, Mercury with his blown fucking face is out coming to the ring here. This is brutal. This looking not just yeah. his face, but the segment is fucking brutal as well. The segment also bad. <laughs> no, not bad. It's like fucked up here. We'll, we'll get into it. No, but it's, it's also bad. Up. So they really. <laughs> <laughs> so Jerry Mercury comes to the ring and they are zoomed in on this face crazy style. They are going to get what they can get out of this right here. Yeah, if you um, haven't if you haven't seen this ladder match, it's actually a very fun ladder match. It's on our Patreon. Patreon on Watch This, uh, one of the episodes ago. Um, there's a million of episodes. Episodes you should check out our Patreon, patreoncom slash PW. We're trying to get to three thousand. If we get them, we're gonna pierce Tony's cock. Uh, it's a bit and it's huge. Big fucking. They big show big. the replay of how this happened five hundred times in a row. They, they show make it him present it nine angles, slow mo, fucking just bleeding immediately, yeah. just terrible. He's, he says, I suffered violent trauma to my face. And as disturbing as it might be for you to see this, I'd like you to join me in viewing the footage. So, yeah, they show it every possible camera angle. It's like if you've ever watched a Smart Mark video DVD from this era, like every possible <laughs> angle, slow-mo, uh, air horn going off what in the back. What matches like, that we watched, Johnny, where we were watching a match and then they... Tournament like, of Death, they would do it all yeah, the time. Yeah, we watched A that, million yeah. times. Are you talking about the Sexy After, Eddie match we watched? Where yeah, they, yes, yes, on yes, Sexy Eddie yes. one. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they show the spot a million times. Michael Cole, as the show, and it says the latter nearly decapitated Joey Mercury. All right, He's we're right. just gonna make shit up. Now, I guess. <laughs> uh, this is the first time anyone in this arena has seen this footage because no one paid for the pay per view. Um, <laughs> the crowd gives them a round of applause because dude, his face got holy up. shit, that's what I'm thinking. Like the crowd gives. There's no way they thought. It's awkward. There's no way they thought that they wasn't going to get a standing O, and they just didn't care. There's no way yeah, like that they, they didn't. easily turned them here. Yeah, the crowd gives them a standing O, and like they could have made, they could have had a fucking couple month angle with him and fucking Nitro turning face, and then the Matt and Jeff are like, are they really fucking like they're good? And then yeah. like they just betray him again, and they go back to it when he's healthy. Yeah, easy. easy. They said no fucking way. Crowd gives him a standing O, and he goes, "You people." Need to know uh, that Matt and Jeff Hardy did this to me. Yeah, they could have. Dude, you're right. They could have. Because, you know, obviously he's out for a while. They could have turned Nitro for a little bit here. Did some six mans with the Hardys against fucking Dave Taylor and Regal or some shit against somebody. And then fucking glommed them once Mercury's come back and say, it was always your fault. Anything like that. Yeah, they just immediately fucking. They knew. There's no it. way anyone wrote that segment and thought the crowd was going to go. Ah, boo, fuck you, bro. Ha -ha. Stupid face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's no fat way. Face. <laughs> fat face. That's what Michael Cole and JBL were saying on <laughs> um, but I Boogeyman would put worms in his stitches. <laughs> Instead, he goes Bitch. straight into this because, you know. You people. Yeah, you fucking <laughs> Matt and Jeff. Yeah, he, he calls out Matt. He says, I hold two people responsible for this, Matt and Jeff Hardy. The crowd pops for Matt and Jeff. And, and he says, because of the Hardys, the bones in my nose have been shattered and I have 33 stitches inside and outside of my face. My movie star good looks are gone possibly forever. 
Matt Hardy comes out. He was reading on the sheet just, there. I was kind of sad. It was, they should have just let him yeah. talk from the heart. That's what I'm saying. Dude, this would have been a good face turn. He was probably still concussed, so maybe... Dude, it was <laughs> fucked up. And, and Matt doesn't make anything better here. It actually makes it way worse when Matt comes out. Matt says, that wasn't my fault. <laughs> he, <laughs> says, he, says, he says, we're, we're in a ladder match, and you, you, Stupid. you, you can get hurt, you dumbass. I could have got hurt, dumb dumb. Yeah. Dude, what You were trying to hurt me, too. Fuck, I can't fuck? believe they just buried it. The Matt Hardy thing <laughs> fucking pissed me off because Matt just goes, yeah, well, there was a ladder match, so you got, we could all get fucked up. Get over it, dude. I'm like, he oh, doesn't apologize, does he, at all? No, this, <laughs> this is this is like we we can do whatever we want. Y'all are gonna watch. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like we got y'all. Whatever. You, were, you weren't injured intentionally. You were injured because you were in a dangerous match. I could have just been hurt just as bad. Uh, any of us could have been hurt. That's the price you pay for competing in a match like this. That's the speech that Vince gave Killed Mercury after the match. Killed every sympathy for him at <laughs> all. Gonna, listen, that could happen to anybody. <laughs> all the sympathy for him was dead right there when Matt Hardy said yeah. that line. That like that could happen to any of us. Oh, fuck. Well, Matt Matt goes to leave. He's like, ah, well, it could happen to anybody. And he goes to leave. <laughs> and Joey says, I'm not finished with you, Marty. You and your brother maimed me. You say that's what happens in competition. Well, then why don't you fight me right now, huh? Why don't you fight me, big man? Fight me, tough guy. And he pushes him. And Matt says, I am not going to fight you, Joey. And then Joey says, well, if you won't fight me, then you'll fight my tag partner, Johnny Nitro. And Johnny Nitro comes out and he attacks Matt Hardy and then the referee rings the bell. I said, what? <laughs> Wait, what? who sanctioned this? Teddy, Teddy, you've made like three matches tonight. What happened here? <laughs> why is this happening? All right. So, uh, yeah, we get Johnny Nitro versus Matt Hardy. Uh, they just have a match, yeah. And all the while, they keep cutting the shots of Joey Mercury on the outside in a chair saying, Super Maim close. him! Dude, okay, Maim all right. Him. So once again here, just to reiterate how stupid this story was. So awesome. Like, it's not obviously not awesome because he got his, he really got fucked up. But I mean, like, there's a lot of, like, so, you know, stuff to make out of this, right? There's a lot. You could go a hundred yeah. different ways of this or whatever. Anyways, so he says, maim him, maim him, maim him, maim him. Kill him, fucking Maim kill him, this rip guy. his face off. Beat his fucking ass. He rolls him up. He, he he cheats to win. Why the fuck? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, why didn't why didn't he? So if you're gonna cheat, well, what even matter if you won? Why dude, didn't you just like go outside, grab the chair, and beat the both? You beat the dude, fucking. Not even where's that? Jeff? Not even that. Where Ni is Jeff? <laughs> Nitro at one point grabs a ladder from under the ring. They go to commercial break. <laughs> they they, commercial. they <laughs> then they come back and the ladder's nowhere to be found. And they don't use the ladder. <laughs> Tony, you're right. They go they go. What are you gonna do with that thing? He goes to commercial, comes back, and he's like in a hold. There's no uh, they ladder. Sh they showed during the commercial, Matt Hardy drop kicked it in his face, and they said the officials came out and took it away. <laughs> okay. Dude, the Hardy should have, like, Johnny Nitro should have, like, fucked up Matt Hardy's face or some shit. You know, like. Yeah, work his face. That just bash hit him with the ladder. With the don't chair. Maim him. Who cares about the win? Maim him. We don't care about rolling him up for a pin to win. We just want to beat the fuck out of him because he messed up they my just boy's face. Yeah, they just wrestle for most of this. Like, Matt's going for his moves. He does the yeah, trick of fate. Dude, the we were effect. so past this the second you blew his face to smithereens. Like, yeah. I'm not getting a roll up victory. I'm getting a roll out of the ring, grab a fucking <laughs> gun, and put it to your head. You know what Dude, I mean? That, that's my brother right there. This you is just the fucked easiest up. thing ever. His face is totally fucked up to, like, you can't even recognize him. And all they had to do was have Johnny Nitro come out. You fucked up my boy and just beat the shit out yeah. of him. Like, they didn't even have to do a match. That's you all it should have been. Nitro uses Mercury as bait. <laughs> yeah, hey, right. You, don't hit him. He's hurt, brother. You don't want to hit him, do you? Yeah, it looks Johnny Nitro looks like shit. Mercury looks like shit. Matt Hardy looks like shit. Everybody looks this like shit. This whole era yeah. is everyone looking like shit all the time. Maim him. They made Batista <laughs> look like shit early on. You're <laughs> right. He almost lost to Sylvan, who, <laughs> by the way, doesn't Damn. do anything for three months after that match, by the way. Is that right? Yeah, I looked at He just doesn't do shit until like. Well, Matt, Matt goes to the second rope. Melina distracts Matt. Nitro hits him with an enziguri and bumps him out to the floor. Matt hits the side effect for two, then the second rope leg drop for two. He goes for the twist of fate, reverses it. Uh, sorry, Nitro reverses it. Matt grabs the ropes, goes for the twist of fate again. Nitro backslides him and puts his feet on the ropes and wins. Ooh, I, I, uh, oof, yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, I mean, whatever. Roll up with feet on the ropes to, yeah, you know, so, whatever. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't really have anything nice to say. Dude, here. they could have just fucking kept Mercury off TV and said he's fucked up. He can't be on TV. And then they could have done a million to, things. You're right. It's yeah, frustrating. It's like literally anything else than what they did here would have been better than what they did here. So MVP was calling fire. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember this? Did you watch this? Um, Do you remember this show at all? Or were you out? 
Oh, dude, I was out at this point. Okay. Oh, hell, dude, I no, I would, this. If I was on this show, yeah, I would have been like, no, have I, I have never watched Have you seen this before then or no? I have. Yeah, I have seen it. Okay. But yeah, I yeah. was way out by this point. Yeah. Sure, yeah, yeah. Tony, you saw this though, Yes, right? I saw it at a bar. They used to go this to like- This opens the show, by the way, I'm pretty sure. I think this is the opening match of Armageddon. Yeah, I kind of get that. Uh, was it the opening match? Maybe it was. Yeah, it was. In my mind, yeah, it was. I thought it, it was. was. Yeah, because they have to set up all the gimmick, you know, the Inferno sure, gimmick yeah, stuff, yeah, yeah. so it probably takes forever. Yeah, so Kane sets MVP and his Power Rangers outfit on fire. Uh, and JBL says, I'm going to call out Teddy Long now. I said, oh, shit, okay, what the hell is this about? So we come back, JBL Town Hall. And listen, man. This is uh, Johnny's favorite segment you told me before we started. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I couldn't believe this because it's, I'll read, I'll, you know, I have written down what the shit JBL says here, but the first half of it, this is, I don't know how long, is this a five minute promo? Like he talks for a long time. It feels like. Yeah, it was, it was a bit. Yeah, for sure. JBL talks about Armageddon. He was appalled and horrified over what happened. Teddy Long brought back a match that was dormant for seven and a half years, the Inferno match. And there's a reason we don't do those. It looks good on paper. Someone gets burned until you realize somebody gets burned. <laughs> A human right. being was set on fire at Armageddon. <laughs> Words in the word pictures in the Line. word pictures. <laughs> it says word pictures in the Bible describe hell as people burning and screaming in pain, and that's what happened in Armageddon. It's all Teddy Long's fault. This is what Teddy Long did to MVP, and then he they show the slow motion video of Kane setting MVP on fire. He's JBL making people watch this again, <laughs> even though it's horrifying. <laughs> JBL says, Teddy, you call this entertainment, I call it garbage. So you come down here right now, and I think you should be fired, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna call for that just yet. You come down here and apologize to me and to SmackDown and to MVP because MVP can't be here because he's laying in a burn unit. And you will be sued. <laughs> you will be sued. <laughs> Well, Teddy Long doesn't come he out. He doesn't come out. He came out <laughs> earlier because Santa Claus was here. <laughs> what the hell? He doesn't come out and he doesn't acknowledge it and it's not talked about for the rest of the show. He just doesn't fucking come out. Teddy Long does not give a doesn't fuck JBL about Doesn't JBL just go saying. back on can commentary too? Dave, yeah, JBL's over there for the rest. JBL's jerking his fucking shitty little dick about the next match Holy after shit. this. He comes out and says, this fucking sucks. You shouldn't be in charge. I hate this company. I'm sick of well, it. Well, there's more. And now there I'm going to go more. do commentary. Yeah. Well, Teddy doesn't come out and he says, okay, well, if you don't want to come down here, then I'm going to talk about the people really responsible. You people. He I said, like, you people. No. No. He did say no. that. He said, you people. <laughs> yeah, no. he's cooking. He said, let him cook. <laughs> We just had a you people segment earlier with Johnny Mercury. Fucking yeah. He said, Joey you don't Mercury. cheer. Yes, you don't, Johnny Mercury, yeah. You don't cheer because a guy gives his life to you in the ring. It's not enough that someone gives his health in the ring. I'm not in the ring because I broke my back and that's not enough for you sick people. Yeah. You yeah. people are responsible yeah. and it disgusts me. Rome did not fall because of the gladiators in the Coliseum. It fell because of the sick people in the stands. Of you people. You people wish yeah. for one instance in your life you were like MVP and someone would pay to see you in your miserable life. There is not one person that would pay to see you sons of bitches do anything. You've embarrassed yourself. You've embarrassed me. And look at the person next to you. You have embarrassed this country. Yeah. You people make me sick. Yeah. <laughs> He's cooking. And I'm like, all right, he is on fire. Who's coming out to stop this son of a bitch? And then, all right, commercial, it's time for the Divas <laughs> tag match. I said, what? Dude, it like, what? it zooms into what? JBL's face and, he, and Layla L say, yo, I say, yes, dude. sir. Yes, sir. And like, okay, so maybe something comes of it the week after. I'm sure it fucking does. I don't know that for sure. Tony, maybe you can look. I it. was I'm, thinking, okay, is JBL going to manage MVP and they're going to have like a something. thing or something? I don't think anything comes of it, honestly. Uh, maybe. JBL does a 10-minute fucking promo, not a wrestler anymore. I'm like, oh, dude, he he just fucking shits on everybody. And nobody cuts him off. And then, they, and then he, like Tony said, he goes back to commentary and he's jolly and happy and fucking celebrating the WWE DVD board game. <laughs> well, that, you know, that's just rocking. That's the second set the right DVD there. DVD board game is awesome. I don't know. What about. I have one of those. Aww. I have a TNA one too. <laughs> <laughs> JBL and MVP do a promo on the next SmackDown that's live and says, JBL says he was disgusted with what happened and they blame Teddy Long. 
And MVP says he's going to recover from his injuries and beat Batista for the world title. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> well, Santa almost beat him, so why couldn't you? I mean, what the hell? <laughs> so what do we have next here, James, after JBL just dressed down Teddy Long, the boss, the fans, uh, and everybody, and he's back on commentary here. Well, as Michael Cole says, these are the sexiest women you'll see on TV. Um, he says that a lot. Yeah, make sure you understand that. Layla and Ashley versus Crystal and Jillian Hill. <laughs> I'm sorry, Jillian I almost, Hall. I was like, wow, there's, there's four women here with no last names, and then Jillian Hall comes out. I'm like, all right, fair enough. JBL says you can beat Ashley with an ugly stick, and she'd still be hot. Thank you, JBL. And Michael calls that these are the sexiest women I've ever seen in my life. They are the sexiest women on TV. Oh, my God. Thank you so much. Uh, you know, sometimes it's difficult to say anything about these matches because it's not like the girls weren't trying to be good or anything. They just weren't trained to do shit. And I'm pretty sure JBL says that on one point on commentary. So why train them? Just let them go out there for 15 minutes. He legit says they're hot. I don't care what they do. Yeah, he, I think, I'm pretty sure he legit says who cares if they're trained. <laughs> yeah, I'm uh, sure he says something yeah, like yeah. that. He probably does say <laughs> yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> who cares if they're trained? Fucking just have them out there for 15 minutes. Oh, yeah, Cole says Ashley has really improved in the ring. JBL says, I don't care. She's hot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is okay, insane. Dude. This is Layla's, like, second ever match in WWE, I think. Is that right? It's, it's, like, one of her early ones. I don't remember if it's, like, her, I'm pretty sure it's, like, pretty pretty early on. Cole says he loves watching the Divas tag matches and all the scientific moves. So they're just not only, like, just being jerk-offs. They're also being jerk-offs. You know what I'm saying? Like, Yeah, this is no, crazy. absolutely. Well, I'll be honest with you. They kind of cook here for a minute. There's something, yeah, Layla actually doesn't seem bad here at all. <laughs> no, dude, Layla had the fucking craziest elbow, uh, like forearm, fucking yeah. harkens back to the days dude, of Budokan she... sellouts, Terry Gordy, Dr. Death. <laughs> Business was good. She Business was good. Jillian. Jillian. <laughs> she rocked Jillian with a forearm and then a clothesline. I was like, holy shit. Yeah, okay. she was rocking, man. Uh, I, I fucking always had a soft spot for Layla. She was. Jillian goes cool. for the razzle dazzle, but Layla kicks her in the back of the head. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, dude, there was a super creative spot here in this match. Um, Ashley goes for the monkey flip. Um, oh, she grabs her. Yeah, yeah, I think it was Crystal holds on to Crystal, Jillian. Yes. Yeah. Um, and then, like, she holds her in the corner. So when Ashley goes for the monkey flip, she, like, falls backwards and takes a bump. And then uh, Jillian tries to cheat for the two count pin and she kicks With the feet out. on the ropes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And super creative. I think Layla, Layla might have kicked her legs out for the pin, too. It was fuck Yeah, it was very cool. Then uh, the finish of the match is Layla hangman's Jillian on the ropes. And Ashley goes off the second rope, and Michael Cole says this is what she calls the starstruck, which is a second rope elbow. That's her finisher. I don't remember that being in the games as her finisher. Well, you know, that she's been practicing it a lot. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they said. Or I don't care. She's yeah, hot. I don't cares. care. Whatever. Um, but yeah, this, I, this is my favorite match on the show. <laughs> it was, it was, I guess the ending sequence was fun as no hell. No joke, yeah. Ashley, I, I, I Ashley had a 2K comeback and then a total roll head scissors. Yeah, I, yeah. I'm saying, that's what I'm saying. Like, I feel like I feel like they were cooking. I, I, this, is, this is a good yeah. match. Create a good fucking spot. I've never seen. I don't know if I ever seen the monkey flip thing like that. I don't. No, I if like, I have, I forgot about it. That. Yeah, we're gonna steal that. Uh, so, anyways, Vladimir Kozlov's here. He loves the double Russian. double E. He loves <laughs> SmackDown. That's Russian mixed martial that guy. expert and world Sambo champion that Vladimir guy, Kozlov. Sambo. And Ko as Michael Cole's introducing him, Kozlov yells Kozlov into the microphone. <laughs> Got double double E. I say, yeah, he's rocking. I'm very happy to be here in America. I love double double E. I love SmackDown. I, I love look forward to compete in America and work for a double double E. <laughs> Yeah, the crowd's like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like he looked like a normal dude here too, like a human being. Yeah, yeah, regular guy. Yeah, like I thought he looked a lot cooler here that he ends up looking in his little white joints in WWE. Yeah, yeah. And Undertaker's in the back thinking, oh, I gotta but, lose to this fucking guy. <laughs> <laughs> You're not making it out of here. I'm gonna make sure to make sure this doesn't happen for you, brother. But before that, I have to have a shitty match in the main. <laughs> make sure you watch. This is your career. <laughs> So you uh, escaped me. Yeah, Cole says, "Hey, we're pretty partial to a SmackDown, and we'd love to see you compete in a SmackDown ring." And Kozlov takes the mic and then says a bunch of shit in Russian. Probably said, "Fuck America." <laughs> he, <laughs> probably, he probably said, "Fuck, fuck the troops." That's a fuck, shitty idea. Fuck Undertaker, that bitch. <laughs> Garbage yeah, ass match him. coming up. Sarah have sex with me for sure. <laughs> he probably said Rick Martel did it, so I'm doing it. And the crowd said, "Yeah!" <laughs> Thank you very much. All right, now it's time for the main event: uh, King Booker oh and Fit Finlay versus Kane Undertaker, and they get so much time here. 
Yeah, my uh, my skip forward ten seconds button has gotten a lot of views in this matchup. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. I hear you. That's the Undertaker main event special. I, I skip forward ten seconds until I see him do a move and then I write Dude, it down. Before we <laughs> even get there, Taker Taker gets his WrestleMania entrance here. We were talking Dude, about that earlier. Oh my god! There's 15 minutes left in the show, maybe 20. I'm like. This is all entrances. So I skip, 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 skip. The match starts. There's 10 minutes left. I said, get the fuck out of here. 10 minutes of entrances, man. Uh, So King Booker Pinky. That's awesome. I like that. (laughs) Uh, Undertaker gets his big ass entrance. The only thing I'm thinking there in this is um, uh, I'm getting word. Sandman, Tommy Dreamer, and Rick Martell are (laughs) (laughs) If you haven't watched, if, if you don't know. Pulse has gotten into the WWE 2K22 universe mode game. Yeah, that's right. He's doing the universe mode on his YouTube channel. I uh, joined him on the last episode. Uh, I don't know if the, I'm assuming it'll be the last one ever. <laughs> no, we're, we're guy, when, when I come back from I'm down Christmas, to do more. I'm yeah, when I come you. back for Christmas, we're coming back with more. We're cooking. When do you, you come back that weekend? Uh, I come back Friday. So yeah, I'll be back Friday. Oh shit! Okay, all right. Well, I'm around. So okay, yeah, we're rocking. Uh, yeah, definitely check out uh, Tony. Tony you you have to this. join. Yeah, yeah, you have to join, bro. It's pretty right. cool. He so he he does uh like it's just a one month build to a pay per view. So you'll like, but you'll you also get to play. Like he share plays it. Yeah, and, yeah. Like, you, you pick a match you want to fucking do, and you guys play it. James and I were working. We were working <laughs> the hell out. Dude, there was a crazy ass fucking match we Sheeta had. Sheeta and uh, Sare. Uh, Sare. Yeah, yeah. Holy, Banger match. Yeah, it was dope. Uh, so yeah, you just it's just one match for each show follow up unless there's like crazy matches going on and then you watch the pay-per-view it's fucking yeah, awesome yeah then we just hang out for an hour yeah that's pretty much what Macho I was there that's hated awesome. it yeah Macho was like I don't want to do this <laughs> <laughs> so he kept that's it awesome. there and he did it so. yeah please 100% check that out uh, and let us know that you like it so James will keep doing it <laughs> yeah if you guys say you don't like it I'm done I'm moving on you <laughs> uh, so King I'm Booker I'm trying to find anything to talk about that's not this yeah, match yeah I hear you King Booker Fit Finlay got that <laughs> I wrote down here, this era of Undertaker is fucking awful. And I said, I said, all eras of Undertaker kind of bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, and I hear you. Like, uh, I, I know a lot of people, I think a lot of people have a soft spot because of Sean and the WrestleMania stuff, 25. Sure, 26, even the Triple whatever. H matches probably. Triple H, or, uh, sure, and like, whatever. You know, I think they're good for they you guys. Um, I'll give it like, to I'll take, I like those matches. But dude, I don't know. Like, when he came back as Dead Man again, I'm like, bro, come on. You can't, so how when are you going to die again? Oh, dude, you know what it was? Is I because I stopped watching, so then yeah. I came back, and then I was like, "There's no fucking way this dude's still doing this fucking gimmick." Because <laughs> like, oh, you, you didn't know he came back as dead, right? Then. Yeah. So like I said, there's no fucking way that this guy's still doing this shit. Yeah. And it's even cheesier than before because now he's got it's fucking lightning cool. striking people and fucking like I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Yeah. Yeah, I don't yeah, know. I was, wasn't rocking with this taker at all. I'm sorry, guys. I know. No, and then he ruined Muhammad Hassan's career. I'm sorry, Muhammad Hassan. Dude, and also, oh, man. I was a, I was a big like. Muhammad Hassan was based. I was a big get of the ring guy, and Taker was not. Well, he's not. No, no, <laughs> Taker's no. not a big get of the ring guy. That's why even, I like you know the, funny? the bike. Even when he got there, d- well, even with the bike, he would do all around the ring, slowly get off bike, slowly get into the ring, and then do poses all four sides. <laughs> yeah, so but was, I mean, like was, he got to the ring. It was still shorter. Yeah, yeah he got to the ring. Shorter. Yeah. You take the little hat off. <laughs> what, what was the? Uh, well, he had the, the one era, Undertaker big hat era was crazy. This is like, this era, right? Did he yeah, have the fucking ten gallon hat? hat was it ten There's gallon yeah. hat? Jeep, taker? Yeah, here? the Jeepers Creepers hat. Yeah, Dude, yeah I don't yeah, know. This, this doesn't seem era, like yeah. the ten. This oh, is, is it seem, not? Okay, maybe no, not. not this one. But he had it in this era. It's he just soon. Yeah, There's a crazy ten gallon hat taker. That's like nuts. Can we make that on two K? Yeah, we can. Can we make the hat bigger? Can you like? Is there like a hat meter? No, there's not. Well, you might be able to make his head bigger. Oh, okay. If someone knows how to work the technology to get 10 gallon hat taker but we've got to figure it out someone's got a picture of that send that to me it was, was it me right now <laughs> holy <laughs> yeah look, look at this hat the one i said you is crazy yeah bro this is wow, this is, is egregious holy can you tweet that right now the tweet tony's yeah I'm a, you mind if i tweet that tony Dude, I don't own claim to Taker's big Yeah, but I just want to make sure he does. Let me find so a terrible sure. picture of you to tweet first. Hold on. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, Tony. Please, no. Please, no. God damn. Dude, uh, you know, you want to know something fucked up? I Was that D- DPW or were, I don't know if you guys were around or not. <laughs> Somebody was telling me that the first ever 
thing they've ever seen of Shawn Michaels was when he got thrown through the Jeratron. And they just wow. thought that was Shawn Michaels forever. Like he's that, just he's, old idiot. He's that got like a grizzled TV? vet, you know. Like That's that right. was him wow. forever. And I that fucked me up forever when I heard that. You that. tweeted this on the main. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> on the main. Like, I gotta wow. make sure people see that. That's a big. Oh, you stole my image, you bastard. Yeah. Bro, no, I got <laughs> a handshake deal. I'm gonna tweet it in my circle that I've taken you guys oh, out. Of. Fuck. <laughs> I'll, put a po- I'll put a poll. Who no should have tweeted this? No more Johnny or Tony. I'm gonna win. Johnny wins. Sadly, again. <laughs> I promise I don't want to talk about this tag match. No, I hear you, but <laughs> oh, yeah, the idea was uh, Booker and Philly divide and conquer, take them out. That was the gimmick. It's just heat. Do. It's heat. They get heat on Taker. God, until they damn, take that a boy's chair. head is crazy. How did he get that? <laughs> There's that in the game. He's got a bandana under it too. Holy man! It's that like bitch the is uh, the Simpsons episode with Daryl Strawberry. He's got the giant head. Got the big that. ass joint. Yeah, dude. Yeah, that's Taker. Look, yeah, look at that. that's fucking that. crazy, bro. Whew, that's a hell of a so hat. Yeah, Booker and Finley, heat, 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 heat. Top heat, five heat, hats uh, in wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> this is number one for sure. <laughs> yeah, this is like a crazy hat. <laughs> <laughs> Top five craziest hats. Can you make this the pot art? <laughs> instead, of, instead, the Dimodome hat too, right? That one too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This should be pot art. <laughs> that has nothing to do with this episode. What the fuck? Tell, tell it to Taker and Kane looking at Booker T and Fit Philly, and it's Taker with just an insane hat, just a crazy. Should I tell them to do Dimodome hat? Yeah, like, like, it, like they're like, like down low, and they like big. The, like think of it like the like, <laughs> like I figure like this. It should be like this, right? Like this picture right here. Yeah, yeah. Like think of it zoomed out crazy in the hats. It's fucking it'll yeah, take it yeah. on Taker and Kane on one side. It's gotta be take, big and wide though, not just big high. Yeah, yeah. big and wide and high, and then yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. The, the tag match on the other side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah it's rocking. <laughs> it's always the Undertaker at the first Thanksgiving pilgrims. <laughs> Uh, it, sh- it shouts out no love trans film that was a good fucking tweet right there his, gra- his brain grew three sizes <laughs> since visiting the learning tree <laughs> Kane lightning bolt with a heater shouts out that's awesome so Kane Undertaker went with double chug slam Tube's hey there was a chair yeah. shot at one point to take her uh, oh yeah came- Booker holy fuck Tony no I wanted to forget Booker Steel chair to the head of a taker. Finley shillelagh to the head of taker. Undertaker still wins. <laughs> that angry, no, but that chair right? shot was crazy. That was awesome. I love chair that. Chair shot was awesome. Shillelagh was cool. Made a cool sound. And then a low blow as well. And then, no, oh, fuck you. Taker. Double came, choke slam. Choke tombstone. slam. And taker tombstones Finley on top of that for the win. Fucking bastard. Yo, I'm sorry, all you 2006 ites out there, man. You know what I mean? You know, I'm, listen, man. They're not. You got to give them some credit. I'm. They. If they watch this back, there's no way they can say it. They probably love it, man. They they know. No, 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 no. 